Okay, so uh, what will be the end times religion? Um, I kind of talked about this in the previous video, but I just want to make a video specifically about it. Maybe this is something people will search for. So what's going to be the end times religion? Um, I've heard a lot of a lot of people think it's going to be Roman Catholicism. Um, a lot of people think it's going to be like New Age or Theosophy or something like that. Uh, some people think it's going to be, I don't even know what you would call it, I guess panspermia, that's a name uh, uh, different atheists use to describe uh, the notion that they think we were created by aliens. They call that panspermia. Some people think that's going to be the end times religion. But to me, it's just, to me, it's just so clear. The end times religion will be Luciferianism. It'll just be overt luciferianism forget all this you know cloaked this or whatever you know roman catholicism all this stuff it's just going to be luciferianism because here's the thing many religions uh, are waiting for a flesh and blood savior they're waiting for some guy to show up and fix humanity some guy to show up and, and, and fix mankind and save humanity. And so, uh, like in Roman Catholicism, for example, that would be them awaiting a flesh and blood return of Christ. In um, Islam, they're waiting for the Mahdi. In Buddhism, a lot of Buddhists think there's going to be a, a reincarnation of Buddha, a second coming of Buddha. Hare Krishna, so a lot of them are waiting for a, uh, an incarnation of Krishna. Uh, New Agers <coughs> are waiting for the Maitreya. So the point is, all these religions are built waiting for some guy to show up and fix the world. Antichrist. Uh, even, even, they don't know it, but even the Roman Catholics are waiting for the Antichrist because the Bible says that when Jesus comes back, when Jesus comes back, it's game over. When Jesus comes back, it's not some dude riding around on a colt. Like when Jesus comes back, it's game over. Like Jesus is showing up in a glorified state and there's going to be no ambiguity whatsoever of who he is and that he's God and all of that. So the Roman Catholics, though, are waiting for a man, like a flesh and blood man to show up. Antichrist. Muslims are waiting for the Mahdi. Antichrist. New Agers are waiting for the Maitreya. Antichrist. Hare Krishnas are waiting for the incarnation of Krishna. Antichrist. So they're all poised. They're all, you know, semi-ready for the Antichrist. So what's my point? So the point is just that I can just see how this is all going to go. There's going to come in these next years, decades, sort of a consolid consolidation of nations, consolidation of religions. You're going to see like all of the, you know, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, um, Hare Krishna, all these. They're just going to get brought under some type of umbrella, probably, you know, Eastern mysticism or whatever, some name to that effect. Um, I do think, unfortunately, that at some point, probably Protestantism will get reabsorbed into Roman Catholicism. Uh, probably at some point that will bring in Judaism. And then probably at some point that will merge with Islam. And then there's your Christ Islam that people talk about. So there's your consolidation. Um, you will probably see, I, I would predict, prophesy, whatever prophesy that the the first Lucifer overt Luciferian group or or the group that will go under the Luciferian umbrella will be witchcraft the occult the new age um, you know Satanism uh, theosophy I bet you those at some point in the coming decades will get absorbed under the Luciferian umbrella. Because even though many witches and New Agers and etc., they don't regard themselves as Luciferians, uh, they do have some sense of that Lucifer is good. There is some degree of Lucifer veneration or regard. When I was into the New Age, my conception of Lucifer was that he was good, he was an angel of light, and the Bible just didn't understand. 
I didn't have a Luciferian worldview per se because I didn't know enough. I just thought, okay, Lucifer's good. The stupid Christians don't get it. I mean, that was basically my attitude. So um, I know that some degree of Lucifer regard, veneration, whatever, is held in a number of occult, new age, witchcraft, etc. type circles. And even just being online, there's been times I've talked to, you know, witches and stuff like that. And then they'll start talking about how Lucifer is good and he liber liberated us from Yahweh or Ad Adonai, you know. Adonai is the word that uh, a lot of like witches and uh, Luciferians use for for God, for Jehovah, for Yahweh. I don't know. For some reason, Adonai is like a pejorative name. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. So the point is that what I'm seeing is that over these next decades and such that the religions will get consolidated until you have these like block religions, Chrysalon block, Luciferianism block, uh, Eastern mysticism block. You could already see how Eastern mysticism could pretty much, pretty easily get brought under a Luciferian umbrella. It wouldn't take a lot. It would not take anything tremendous. The hard one is gonna be Chrysalon. But again, I mean, you can just already see. As time goes on, where do I even want to go with this? I believe that a, you know, a large revival is coming, but then what happens after the revival? Because a lot of these Christians who come, a lot of these people who come to Christ, they're not going to be the fourth type of soil. Like if you read the parable of the sower, you got soils one, two, three, four. It is very clear from the parable of the sower that only the fourth type of soil is going to heaven. So a lot of these Christians who come to Christ, people who come to Christ and become Christians or call themselves Christians in this coming revival, a lot of them are going to be soils one, two, and three. A lot of these are going to be virgins without a vessel of oil, like if you look at the parable of the virgins. A lot of these are going to be Christians who will do some stuff in Jesus' name, and they're not total frauds. They've got some degree of a relationship with God, some amount of the Holy Spirit. But then, you know, when they go to judgment, God's going to say, uh, Jesus is going to say, depart from me, ye who work iniquity, I never knew you. So the point is, as this revival takes off and lots of Christians come in, there's going to be false converts or real converts who are watered down. A lot of lukewarm Christians, a lot of Christians with tickling ears, a lot of Christians who are in a people who are in a really deep, dark place. They came to the Holy Spirit, felt good, felt the peace of God, felt the joy of God. But then they don't like all the rules and they don't like what they got to give up and they don't like that they got to lose family members. And so there's just going to be a lot of people after the revival, whether this is years or decades or whatever, who are going to fall away completely. In fact, people who are going to turn against God, people who will know God and overtly turn against him. Uh, there will be people who will never fall away per se, who will never go against God per se. But they will always operate in this lukewarm state and they will have itching ears and they will be, you know, listening to the doctrines of devils, as the Bible says. And so the point is, there will just come a point where this, this, you know, whatever happened, this christ -Islam entity or whatever, it'll just become progressively more and more and more and more watered down, more and more and more and more non-biblical and probably eventually more and more and more and more anti-biblical. I'll tell you another thing I could see happening. A lot of churches recently have been talking about the Holy Spirit, which is good because a lot of churches are deficient. They talk about Jesus and that's it. Well, what about the Holy Spirit? Well, what about the Father? You know, this is a, a triune God, a Trinity. You shouldn't be too Jesus-centric. You shouldn't be too centric on any of these three. I mean, the Father is the one who orchestrated this whole plan. Jesus is sort of the one who implements it, and then the Holy Spirit is sort of a mediator, and the Holy Spirit is present everywhere, and, you know, they all three matter. All three play a role. All three are one, but, you know, so they're one, but they're kind of three. It's a, like a three-faceted entity. Anyway, Trinity is a hard thing to describe. That's a whole other video, but the point is that all three matter. And so it is good if churches talk about the Holy Spirit and it is good if people encourage people to, you know, 
be full of the Holy Ghost and all that type of stuff. But the problem that I see already is a lot of churches are getting like really Holy Spirit centric, like to the point of where they kind of aren't too concerned about Jesus and they kind of aren't too concerned about the Father and they maybe even aren't too concerned about the Bible. And so again, what I foresee coming in the future is there will be, you know, Basically, you'll have people who will want to use the Holy Spirit as an excuse to get away from the Bible. Because what they'll say is, is look, I've got the Holy Spirit. What do I need this book for? Uh, they'll say, hey, look, the Holy Spirit indwelt the people who wrote this Bible. Well, guess what? Now the Holy Spirit's indwelling me. So I'm going to fix this Bible, or I'm going to write a new Bible, or I'm going to determine what should be in here and what should not. The, the Holy Spirit has put in me, this Bible was good 2,000 years ago, but now we need a new Bible, so I'm full of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to write this new Bible. I could totally see that type of stuff coming. And so the point of all this is, as time goes on and things get more watered down and people just get dumber and more brainwashed and less able to think critically and even just less able to even be able to do research. I mean, you can see how selective YouTube has gotten for you search for something and what it shows you. Same thing with Google. You type in exactly what you're looking for and they're going to give you what they want you to see. Uh, you know, there's just all kinds of stuff like that. Over the last five, 10 years, it's gotten really ridiculous. So there will probably come a point where it's like, how do you even do research? Like all the Google algorithms are skewed, all the YouTube algorithms are skewed. Like how can you even research? I mean, what, what, they could start, I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff going on. There's all kinds of stuff they could do. The point is as time goes on, everything gets watered down. You're gonna have more of a push to believe that all the religions are the same. It's going to start to look like all the religions are the same because they're all waiting for this flesh and blood dude to come back and fix the whole world. And so slowly but surely things will unfold until finally the world is under the whole world. All the religions are under a Luciferian umbrella and now they're ready to embrace the Antichrist, the Mahdi, the flesh and blood Jesus, the Maitreya, the Krishna. They're just ready, right? And so like I said in the previous video, the world has largely opted into Luciferless Luciferianism. The world largely thinks biblical principles are bad and do what thou wilt is good and do whatever you want. And if it feels good, do it. And as long as you're not hurting anybody, do whatever you want. And, um, you know, objective morality is a myth. And, the world's opted into, I mean, all this stuff. It's opted into white witchcraft or um, cloaked occult, you know, the secret, uh, the law of attraction, uh, some of the stuff they talk about in like that what the bleep do we know video, um, all that different type of stuff. That stuff is right up Lucifer's alley. It's Luciferless Luf Luciferianism. So like I said, people are fine to opt in to a lot of what Satan brings to the table, and yet they are not willing to call themselves Satanists or to call themselves Luciferians, or if they were to find out that they are in fact inadvertently worshiping Lucifer, they'd be like, oh my God, I didn't know, and then they'd start going to church or they'd change their whole life. So the point is, we're living in a time where the world has largely embraced Luciferless Luciferianism, the, the principles without the person or the principles without the entity, right? You can just see what's coming in the future, years, decades, whatever it is, what we got now, but to the nth degree. People will embrace cloaked witchcraft, they'll embrace witchcraft. People will embrace cloaked occult, they'll embrace the occult. People will embrace a Luciferless Luciferianism. They'll embrace a Lucifer-filled Luciferianism. And so that's why I say in the previous video, when the mark of the beast shows up, it's not even going to be a secret. Like the world at that time will already be under this Luciferian umbrella. And so they'll just be ready to take the mark of the beast. Now, I know the Bible talks about 
how, uh, you know, uh, with respect to the mark of the beast, many will be deceived, many will be deceived and many will take it. And people take that different ways. Like they think deception means they're going to sneak a microchip into a vaccine or something like that. You know, the deception that it's talking about in the book of Revelation is what I just told you. When, when Luciferianism comes along, people are going to think that they have found the truth. I guess I should even talk about what Luciferianism is because I haven't even gotten into that. So, okay. <laughs> Luciferianism said, well, it can say basically one of three things. It can say that God is evil and Lucifer is good. It can say that uh, God and Lucifer are equal take your pick, or it can say that um, Yahweh is a demiurge, which means like a lesser God, and uh, Lucifer is the greater God. So Lucifer actually is God. That's kind of like the probably the default Luciferian position, but the other two are viable too. The other two, I mean, there's Luciferians that believe that. So some think God is good, God is bad, but Lucifer is good. Some think that, um, whatchamacallit, what did I just say? That, uh, <laughs> that uh, Satan, that the two are equal, that Satan and God are equal. And some think that Lucifer actually outranks uh, Jehovah, Yahweh, but um, we haven't figured that out yet. We haven't come to the point where humanity can accept that or whatever. So that, okay, should have said this at the beginning, that is what people will believe in the end times. And you can see from all the stuff that I just said, how slowly but surely it'll take time. It won't be an overnight thing, but slowly but surely things will build up until people get to that point where they are willing to opt in to that ideology. I, I can make other videos about how that will happen because it's, I can see how it will happen. So the point is, of all of this, you know, it's not going to be Roman Catholicism. It's not going to be the New Age. It's not going to be, uh, you know, just theosophy or it's not going to be aliens. It's just going to be overt Luciferianism. And the great deception that the Bible talks about will be just that. The deception, the, the many deceived, the deception will be that people bought into a lie that people bought into the notion that God is evil and Satan is good, that people bought into the notion that God is not God, Lucifer's God, that, you know, people buying into that, people believe in that, people believing that, you know, they got, they got enlightened and now they see the truth and now they understand reality and now they, they, they want to take the mark of the beast because it's good because now they can buy and sell and now, and now they can finally worship Lucifer as God. That's what's going to be happening in the real end times, okay? So I do think the end end is quite a ways off. I mean, I'm not talking millennia, but I do think that um, one to 200 years, something like that, one, one to 250, I don't know. There's a lot that needs to happen. There's technology that needs to happen. There's consolidation of nations that need to happen. There's just a multitude of things that need to happen. And uh, it's going to take a while is what I'm seeing. So kind of a long video. Um, but this is, this is what I'm seeing. Luciferianism will be the end times religion. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Aloha. God bless.